dear friends, today we are on to the Grado Gold cartridge. You friends have seen how well the Grado Black, the Grado Green and the Grado Red have performed so far in their respective Group A, Group B and Group C cartridge reviews and shootout. The Grado Black coming up tops amongst the Group A cartridges as the $70 to $80 price range. The Grado Green as $95 performing superbly alongside the Gold Ring Electra in Group B both superb performers providing great vinyl analog music enjoyments with drive, dynamics, balanced tonality and showcasing a good degree of detail and harmonics that allow one to be so happily engaged in the music. The Grado Red at $170 furthers the case with an even more composed performance refining the images and harmonics, good mature performance. However, after running it for more than 100 hours, Big Brother Gold fails to deliver and this would be one cartridge I will not want to bring to Desert Island. I'm lucky to have spoken to and consulted several experienced vinyl audiophiles and they were very convinced of this point and have repeatedly told me this. Ian, it does not mean that you will be guaranteed a better performing cartridge if you keep spending more and more, buying higher and higher up the range in the hope of upgrading. In the bit of trying to improve on certain sonic parameters, the higher range cards may actually lose out on certain basic things the manufacturer would have gotten right in the lower range cards. And in the end, the higher range cards can sound wrong. And our ears are the best judge, never mind the marketing hype surrounding the upmarket features of the cartridge. The Grado Gold is an unfortunate example of the above and I would rather pick the Grado Black green or red over this goal for my precious vinyl listening sessions. of the Grado cards which I've reviewed before, the gold continues to show brilliance based performance. Great transience delivery, impactful, great extension and great control. Sounding dynamics, which is even slightly better than the already punchy green and red. Things start to go wrong from here. Yes, the treble sounds refined, more refined and detailed in fact than the red and green, but strangely, the extension loses slightly to its more affordable brothers. Hi-hats and cymbals also sound softer, they don't sound right nor convincing. While you all are enjoying your dinners and your libations, your conversation, and watching telephone on my guitar, and I'm really thinking, I get too far. The only possible benefit is when you play highly compressed, bright sounding and poorly mastered records rush to the markets. Mid-range, things go further wrong here, there's a slight depression of the middle of the mid-range registers so you have this dissatisfaction during listening. The vital mid-range energy is not speaking to you. also 
makes for a somewhat caved in presentation, which is unpleasant to listen to. It is as if you have an equalizer module on your system and you tune that middle 1 kHz knob slightly down a little. It is not that much, but being smacked in the middle where our ears are most sensitive to, I don't think you would like the sound. No use pretending all the troubles in my home. Saxophone is an instrument with wind blowing through the reed and coming out of the holes along the way, interacting closely with the resonance of the metallic body. And thus, that slight recess in the middle of the mid-range spectrum, coupled with that slight underrepresentation of the high frequencies, gives the effects of a lack of tonal vibrancy and a closed-in presentation, caved-in presentation of the saxophone. Not enjoyable. <laughs> Vocals, that recession in the middle of the mid-range, again damaging the vibrancy, the listener not being able to feel that extremely vital energy coming off from the singer. That slight underrepresentation of the high frequencies resists the effects of the consonants and contributing to a caved-in presentation of the singer. Apologies to the gold here, vocals are not enjoyable too. Pianos similarly suffer from the lack of middle mid-range energy, however, piano being a percussive instrument differs from brass winds and vocals in that it does not have that wind or air or breath from the artist interacting with the instruments, the airway, the teeth and the lips. And thus, piano seem more tolerated here and did not suffer from that caved-in presentation of vocals and brass winds on the grado go. Pretty impressive in which the grado go reproduces that transient sting of the string and how it differentiates that pluck from the ensuing resonance of the string and guitar. Well, the darkness it covered me. Detailed harmonics of the ensuing resonance of the guitar's body are also well resolved. Even in busy mixes, when various instruments, each having their characteristic harmonics, starts playing together, separation is good. Images are spot on, delineated on the stage.
Turvy case here with the Grado Gold whereby it's better, it's more affordable brothers, the red, green and black in certain sonic parameters but somehow losing its fits when it comes to mid-range coherency and high frequency travel, amplitude and energy. To reflect on those experienced vinyl audiophiles words of advice which I've shared with you at the start of this video, I really do feel that the wise construction and the synergistic use of cheaper materials can often be better than the usual hyped up and blatant use of more exotic materials and construction. Thank you friends! Next it will be down to these two better players, the Nagaoka MP150 and the Goldring1006. See you friends! Come